Dennis Infante, Other Funkers, and Group Mechanics crew. I'm doing an interview with uh, Drip TV. And yeah, yeah, yeah. Is that what you want me to say? Yeah. <laughs> well, the first dance that I started to um, learn was hip hop. Like a lot of the party dances from like the late 80s, uh, early 90s type stuff. And then locking, uh, and then I tried to get into b-boying and like popping, but it's just like, wasn't that successful at it. So locking and house and hip hop is probably what I enjoy the most. I wouldn't call one of them my primary style because I like to do a little bit of everything, but I guess majority of the things that uh, I'm known for, I guess is, would be locking, so yeah. First group that I was in is uh, we called ourselves Chain Reaction. Um, not to be confused with the original Chain Reaction from the uh, 70s, 80s, but I'll get to that later. So um, we called ourselves Chain Reaction. Yeah, this was probably a little bit after high school, and we were just uh, a couple of folks who knew each other from different high schools, and we all just wanted to start a dance group. And then so. That was the first group that I was in, and we later changed our name to New Origin. I was also a part of uh, DS Players, Groove Mechanics, which is a locking crew in the Bay Area. And now I'm also in a uh, collaborative group called Mother Funkers with uh, Bionic, uh, Why Not, and Cool Row. So well, uh, it's Chain Reaction, we started around August 97, and um, we uh, did the show around maybe 1999 called the American Street Dance Championships and it was the very first one and it was in LA um, our friend Deshaun was managing us at the time so he just told us about the show so we went out there and all we were doing at that time was just mostly uh, hip-hop and choreography um, but our thing or our little thing was uh, we always incorporated humor in our performances um, just because we just, it was in our personality to just goof around or whatnot, and it kind of worked for the audience as well. We did that American Street Dance Championship, and that was like our first time seeing a lot of uh, street dancers like live, like a lot of OGs, and um, they even did like, I think they did like a tribute to the uh, uh, Electric Boogaloo's and the Lockers, and on the big screen they would show like original footage from like, um, the Harlem Renaissance era and you know, Nicholas Brothers tap dancing and all the OG tap dancers. So uh, we were just like, whoa, this is crazy. And there's ciphers everywhere. And say, like, man, this is like so different and cool. After that show was over, this older guy came up to us and was kind of giving us props. And he said, oh, uh, you guys are good, but you know, there's a OG chain reaction, right? And we're like, what, really? Yeah, yeah, they're, uh, they're like a locking group from back then. So you should look them up. So after that trip, um, I looked them up and uh, tried to contact them and just you know let them know like hey you know we we're a group from here in the bay so if you guys I, I doubt you guys have heard of us but you know um, if you have we didn't mean to you know use the same name as you guys and you know we um, we have no problem changing it if you want us to um, so they never replied we kind of just did our own thing for a few years and it wasn't until maybe 2005 that we really decided okay we should just change our name just out of respect and also just because now that we were doing a lot more uh, street dance styles as well we just didn't want anybody to be confused with like the name so it was like a, it would be a good fresh start so that's why we changed it to new origin because it's like haha <laughs> origin new <laughs> first moved into this house, um, we always just used to practice in the garage. Um, originally it was uh, me and two other members of uh, New Origin and then one of our other friends. And uh, we used to just practice 
for no reason on Wednesdays and we, we'd we call it Wiki Wednesdays <laughs> and we would call like random friends just to come get down in the garage and we kind of just thought, oh, why don't we just start teaching classes in the garage? So eventually I started up a locking class on Mondays and it's been successful since. I mean, it's a really small space and uh, some sometimes it can get full and sometimes it, it wouldn't be so full but uh, I like it because it kind of provides that same environment that we, um, I guess, uh, grew up practicing to or, you know, dancing around, which is just a garage, you know, we didn't really have any mirrors, even though we have mirrors now, <laughs> but then like, back then we didn't have any mirrors, it was just like the garage and the music and then just like friends and like the vibe and stuff, so I think uh, it kind of adds like a different uh, element for the people who just, I don't know, something different, right? Um, so I started that up on, on Mondays and we've had other guest teachers, which is kind of cool too, because whenever we have like friends that are out of town and we, you know, we think they're like really talented and amazing, we're like, hey, you know, if you ever want to teach a class, we have like a small group of students who are very consistent at coming and they're really hungry and passionate about dancing. So that's what's awesome too, because it's like we get to see their progress from, from the beginning and it's like, it's pretty cool. So if any of you are interested in taking locking classes here at the Wiki Dojo, it's uh, every Monday from 8 p.m. to 9.30 p.m. Um, it's seven bucks, it's super cheap, right? So it's like not that many locking classes in the Bay. The other locking class I would go to here in the Bay is uh, taught by my partner and crewmate, uh, JP Diaz. He teaches locking classes on Thursdays at City Dance in San Francisco. So JP is actually one of the people that um, was a big influence on uh, for me in learning locking because uh, he's been doing it since man, like, for a long time and he kept it going like in the 90s and um, so I was uh, really thankful and uh, and blessed to have met guys like Siege and JP who really influenced me. <laughs> Comparing the Bay, how it was when I was getting into it till now, uh, very different. And I think it's cool. Like uh, back then, the groups, I would say, kind of stood out in a sense where each one kind of had their own like personality or like, uh, not that groups don't have their personality now. Each group was like super unique back then. So you had one group that was known for this and another group that was kind of known for this. And even like the, the, the moves that everybody was doing and the choreography that everybody was doing was different than each, uh, from each other's. I guess groups were kind of smaller, maybe 12 at the most or 15 maybe. To my experience, like our, our group, we just started because we knew of another person who knew of another person who just wanted to start a crew also. And since like, hey, since we're all friends and freaking you guys just want to start a crew. And it's like that without even kind of seeing how the other person dances. Just if you're just friends with that person, hey, let's start a group. Okay, let's learn how to dance. All right. Luckily enough, like everybody <laughs> knew how to dance. I guess auditions weren't really uh, that big then or from what I know of uh, the groups that, that I knew. Uh, maybe the only group that had uh, auditions on a consistent basis was a uh, Culture Shock, uh, San Francisco and Oakland. But other than that, uh, all the crews were pretty much just like friend based. So now I think it's cool because, uh, um, oh, one other thing about back then is we didn't really have any classes and workshops to go to. So the things that we would have to uh, learn is just from each other or like from going to an event or like a club or something and just kind of learning it that way. Now there's a lot more opportunity to take workshops from OGs and pioneers and peers in the area. Um, I think which is awesome because it just gives another outlet for youth or anybody to just have fun and do what they enjoy and are passionate about. And it also just spreads like the, the dance culture, right? So that, that's always important. I mean, back then we didn't really think about really looking for the history of like locking or popping or hip hop until we were older. So it's good now that uh, that's being spread to the youth right now. So see how many small kids are killing it out now. So, I mean, some of the coolest kid dancers that I've seen or dancers in general even is like art of technique like those kids it's so cute and I hate them <laughs> the groups I think are larger now and uh, in terms of they're more team based so I would say back then a good word to describe it is people were a crew 
And uh, now I think um, it, it's almost to that point where it's like a, a team because it's very organized and structured and, uh, and that's good. Um, because some, sometimes there are dancers out there who just want to be a part of something that's structured and organized. So I, I would say there's a lot more auditions uh, now in this, this generation. There's also YouTube in this generation, which is good and bad. The good thing is that um, anybody can learn about any dance style wherever they're at. So somebody in the Philippines or like a part of the Philippines where there's not that many dancers, and they just don't have that outlet. If they have YouTube and, you know, they could look up that stuff and just be inspired that way. Or one of the bad things about YouTube is that some, some of the people coming up or kids that are just getting into dancing, they think that, okay, just because I watch it on YouTube and I can cop, somewhat copy it, that means I know how to do it already. And that's not, that shouldn't be the case. It should be, you know, really just like learning the actual dance, whether it's from other people or as many people or, you know, an OG or just, you know, YouTube is cool to just expose yourself to the feel and the movement, but you never know what you're gonna stumble upon. Like, there's really bad tutorials out there and bad uh, misrepresent rep misrepresentation of like other dance styles. So that's where it could kind of, uh, that's where the line kind of is. So sometimes youth don't really know what the difference is because they're just starting out. So I think that's one of the things they have to like look out for. But um, I would say this is the only street dance that could be traced down to one person, like popping. Um, uh, there's a lot of debate to where popping came from, if it came from the Bay Area, if it came from Fresno. Um, uh, I personally feel that uh, even though uh, the styles here in the Bay came before what happened in Fresno, I, I see the differences in, in both like how, how Fresno does it and how the Bay does it. Um, so I'm still kind of interested in learning what else truths like arise uh, from that whole like uh, uh, debate. But I think uh, it's it's dope because it just brings awareness to what else is out there, you know? We may have thought this has been going on for a long time when the whole time something was happening over here already. And uh, I think it's just good to not really, uh, when you hear like a hi history of like a certain style, to really just stick to that one person's story because there's so many people who contribute to that style. So like Don Campbell created locking, but there's also other people who, other lockers and dancers from that era who contributed to the dance style and to the vocabulary and kind of helped make it what it, what it is now. There's so many different flavors here in the Bay. When I was kind of just first learning about the scene, everybody would tell me that like, yeah, people that did routines and the b-boys and like the poppers and lockers, it wasn't separate. They were together at these events and it wasn't even like choreo or like street dance. It was just, everybody was just dancing together. And that's what I would kind of like to see more um, today. Um, but I call it fresh because now there's like not only groups who do choreography, but there's a lot of lot more like lockers now, poppers, um, different street dance crews. You know, b-boying is always going to be around. House dancers, whackers, the whacking community is like blowing up here, are starting to grow in the Bay. Turf dancers, I don't know. That's one of the things that kind of inspire me too is seeing a lot of turf dancers. What I like about what they do is that they are able to really just, they're super flexible and have just like a different way of thinking. What inspires me about them, just being able to kind of take what they do and somehow incorporate it into the locking style. So that's one of the things that I like to try to experiment with. I would say if you're going, if you're gonna get into street dance styles is to just really immerse yourself in it. Learn the history, learn not just the moves, but like the culture, know which generations affected each, like I guess like move or style that kind of like evolve. Learn from as many uh, different people as you can that inspire you. Try to reach out to as many like uh, of the OGs and just sit down and you know uh, either uh, learn from them dancing or even just have a small conversation like just story time you know. Um, a lot of them out there are really uh, happy to share like a lot of stories and it's dope because 
I could just be sitting in a room, Scooby Doo, just talking about how they came up with the stop and go, and we're just like, oh, Scooby, you're so cool. <laughs> yeah, it's just to really uh, practice the foundation, really just get the basics down first, like the bread and butter moves, and it's just like uh, any other any other established style, like jazz or ballet, it has its vocabulary and the technique, not just like do whatever. It's a freestyle dance, but you know it has like vocabulary and, and technique, so it's really just a uh, Take it seriously, but also just have fun. Also have fun and be open-minded about the style. One way isn't the, the only way. It's good to just be open and kind of uh, help push the dance or whatever style you're learning into something that's a little bit, I don't know, evolved from what it was yesterday. But also just keep in mind that you really have to know the foundation and master it. And, or not even master it, but, but really have it down so that you're able to understand it and and take it to that next level. Once again, I am Dennis Enfante with Groove Mechanics and the Mother Funkers. And I just did an interview with Drip TV. Shout out to Drip TV. Uh, thank you for even thinking of me to do this interview with you guys. Um, I hope what you guys found um, was uh, entertaining and uh, useful. Um, so I was happy, I'm very happy to share my experience with you guys. My two cents is for all the dancers out there, upcoming, whatever, just have fun. Uh, don't let anybody tell you you can't do something or that looks funny or I don't know if that's gonna work. Just do what you feel is right for you and always just be inspired by the music. There's tons of music out there, not just what's on the radio. Um, go to concerts, go to different types of clubs, hear different types of music, dance to different types of music. It's only gonna help your body adjust to what it's hearing and move a different way. So uh, it's only gonna help you in the long run. Learn as many styles, learn from all the people that inspire you, you know, respect one another, learn the history, eat lots of good food. <laughs> and uh, yeah, that's it, that's my two cents. <laughs>